Let's start with a, a timeline of the uh, crimes of the, the past month, because it's really, uh, it's been described as a crime wave. I, I say it's turned into uh, a tsunami. So it st started with, uh, there was, uh, and you actually reported on this time, a, uh, a machete murder by an African gang. Yes, so this would have been um, what, probably a month or so ago, I believe, uh, somewhere in the western suburbs. Uh, it was a, a gang of, I think, was it half a dozen or a dozen or so African men uh, murdered a man with a machete in the western suburbs of Melbourne. Um, so that's the sort of thing, you know, it's, I wouldn't really say it's the sort of thing that we're used to in Australia, that sort of behaviour and those sorts of news stories. So it's, it's definitely a, a real eye-opener for many people, I think, to hear about incidents uh, such as that one. And that uh, housing commission, which was uh, outside the uh, Melbourne Milo event, there was also uh, a, a young man who was uh, attacked uh, twice uh, by uh, Af African gangs uh, during a, uh, a Saturday night. That was uh, covered on the news quite a bit. He uh, was attacked and then he, went, he was you know, crying for help and then the, the people that came over next, they bashed him again. Yeah, um, so I believe that was, what, like a week on from the, the Milo show. Um, so, yeah, once again, um, you know, a person just minding their own business who was uh, unfortunate enough to, you know, walk through the wrong area. Um, I just, yeah, it just breaks my heart to hear that this guy, you know, as you said, didn't just happen once when it happened twice. And then as uh, this is when the really high-profile uh uh, crime started. Uh, uh, this one was lucky to be captured on a camera. There was the uh, St Kilda uh, Beach uh, African gang uh, fight where they uh, were uh, robbing the uh, passers-by. Uh, this was on a Wednesday night and th Thursday morning. Uh, they uh, uh, took the uh, wallets and phones of uh, goers at, at the beach and then and fought each other, which was uh, captured on camera. And there was also, uh, the next day, another uh, gang confrontation in uh, Collingwood, which was uh, the people involved in that were described of as mixed appearance. I'm not sure what exactly means that wasn't uh, captured on camera, so it uh, didn't get the same media attention. But that was beamed into living rooms around the state, and it really... Uh, that was the beginning of like, wow, you know, this is, you know, because St Kilda Beach, that's a popular uh, place for, um, you know, people to go in Melbourne to, you know, have a good time. It's got a, a good nightlife there. And, and so, and so that's a, you know, area that people associate with a, uh, with a good time and a tourist spot in Melbourne. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think it really back on uh, the Australian culture, the fact that this is a, a beach which represents everything which is great about being an Australian, the fact that we can, you know, we can go and have a, a day out, you know, have a swim, have a surf, you know, go to one of the restaurants there and, you know, have a bite to eat and drink afterwards. So I think the fact that an area like that is now being, um, you know, reduced down to this level, reduced to this sort of a, um, this sort of a culture, I think it's a, a massive tragedy. And I, as I said, I think it definitely represents a significant blow to the Australian cultural identity. And then there was the uh, riot at a uh, Air and Airbnb property in Werribee. Um, these two teenage girls they they'd rented out a, a property in Werribee, and uh, they, uh, fr from what I recall, advertised it on uh, Facebook, and it attracted all these African youths who came. And the police riot squad had to had to be called in, uh, and uh, uh, there was ba there was basically a huge there was. You know, property damage uh, um, uh, to the uh, premises and it had uh, gang graffiti uh, sprayed all over it with Apex and uh, uh, Menace to Society. Yeah, no, so I heard about this. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the fact that it's an Airbnb property as well, so it wasn't even their own property which they were destroying. They, they went to the effort of yeah, renting out someone else's home. Um, and yeah, I just, I can't fathom how anyone could think that is socially acceptable. And I, I really don't think that it is socially acceptable in Australia. So I think incidents like this really, um, I think they really sent a message to us that it's, I think it's about time we took a stand and um, you know, started to, I suppose, respond to these threats to the Australian way of life. 
Uh, and then there was, uh, and this is where uh, it was clear to the public that not even the police were could effectively control uh, what was going on because uh, two police officers were were cornered in uh, I can't remember which uh, western suburb it was in, but an African gang cornered them in an alleyway, and thankfully uh, nothing happened to them. But it's clear that. Uh, you know these African youths. They, you know, they they weren't you know scared of the pl uh, the police at all, and were willing to you know ha uh, you know do uh, as much physical harm to them as they've done to uh, other people. Yes, but I think when you when you're living in a society where even the police are unable to um, effectively enforce the law, I think that's when you've you've really got a bit of a problem on your hands. Quite frankly, um, I and mean, obviously the police are meant to be there to protect the public. Um, and if the police themselves aren't even being uh, respected and um, if they're unable to, you know, do their jobs effectively, then I think, um, you know, something needs to fill the void, something needs to happen. And, yeah, effectively, I don't think that people are going to stand for this for too much longer. I think that um, a solution has to be... Um, I think that we've got to come up with a solution. I think that the problem needs to be addressed. And clearly the current state of affairs is... You know, it's unacceptable and it's not, um, I suppose, the, the current approach of the current government just isn't, isn't doing the job, unfortunately. And then the, the, the most high profile incident was a police officer was uh, attacked at High Point Shopping Centre. He was trying to apprehend a shoplifter and then he was besieged by a group of Af African youths and was uh, kicked in the head uh, by one of them. Now, this... Uh, uh, te uh, teenage uh, accused who allegedly assaulted the uh, police officer. He uh, miraculously was granted bail by a magistrate, but then uh, w uh, no less than 24 hours was uh, back on remand because he'd breached his bail by having a mobile phone uh, because uh, and his justification was, oh, it was too inconvenient for me not to have a mobile phone, so he just breached bail. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't, I'm not really sure what these people need mobile phones for. Um, I don't think they exactly live, um, shall we say, traditional lifestyles. Um, but, yeah, I think that this, this person was very likely not to have even been thrown in jail. Um, I mean, if I was the judge, I would have made sure that he doesn't see the light of day for a few years. Um, but, yeah, for him to just disrespect the, um, the orders of the court in such a way, I think it really does speak volumes of the... Uh, the quality of character of some of the people who have been imported into Australia. And then there was the uh, Tarnate uh, Community Centre, which was uh, trashed. Um, uh, that, although um, you know, it wasn't a physical assault on somebody, it was still, you know, this had uh, been a centre, you know, which would have cost millions of dollars to, to build, and it's, you know, for the benefit of, you know, people like, you know, African immigrants, and it's and it's just been torn apart. Had uh, you know, uh, gang graffiti, you know, written on it. It's you know, it's disgraceful. Yeah, so I think the fact that, um, as you mentioned, the intentions behind this program were to, um, I suppose, encourage this particular community to, you know, to integrate and to avoid crime and all that. And the fact that um, clearly, you know, even these efforts have been. Um, largely unsuccessful, as we can see with this incident. I think that really suggests to us that maybe a different approach needs to be um, needs to be used here, that maybe this whole idea of, you know, investment in community programs and diversity, and but else, it's, clearly not, it's clearly not doing the job. Clearly we need a different approach. I think people are sick of having their um, homes broken into, they're sick of, you know, gang beatings, they're sick of machete attacks. And I think they've got every right to be sick of, um, of this sort of culture. I think that we have a right to feel safe in this country. And, um, yeah, as I said, the, the current approach clearly is not adequate. It's clearly not doing the job. And despite the higher media scrutiny of African youth uh, uh, crime, uh, there was a gang that went on a rampage in the western suburbs of Melbourne, which included a, a violent home invasion. Uh, they stole a car. Uh, they uh, assa assaulted a person, um, you know, on the on the street, and uh, they were pursued by police in the in the stolen car, which they they crashed, but um, still managed to uh, get away and. Um, 
you know they, these home invasions they're they're all, they're all too common there's uh, s- uh suburbs now that are you know living in f- uh, fear or they sleep with baseball bats under underneath their beds and some families are actually deciding that they've, they've had enough and are moving away yeah well i think that's tragic to hear that i mean you hear about families who've uh, you know, lived in one suburb or in one house for, you know, many years, generations even in some cases. And I really don't think that they're the ones who should have to leave. They haven't done anything wrong. Um, you know, they've been decent, law-abiding, hard-working citizens. I think the, the onus really needs to lie on the people who are, um, who are to blame here. So I, you know, it does break my heart when I hear about incidents like that. Um, but yeah, as I said, I think that we as a community need to uh, address the fact that you know, clearly the current approach is not working. Clearly, uh, a different view is needed. Um, and yeah, as I said, I just I I can't really see the current situation lasting for too much longer. I think the people have had enough. And um, yeah, I I really I hope at least anyway that these sort of circumstances will not be existing six months or even a year from now. This has been an unshackled fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.